Okay, so now let's go and wrap up this lesson with doing a little bit of a word problem. So we've talked about polynomials, and we've talked a lot about zeros and, you know, writing the equation of a polynomial. So now let's kind of look at a little bit of an application of, you know, something that would be constructing a box. So it says, receive a piece of cardboard to construct a box um, by removing a square with a width by removing a square with a width of X in every corner. The size of the box is 15 by 60 inches piece of cardboard. I think it's also important to note that I don't think I have this written down that there is no top to the box. So the first question is basically saying, let's write an equation that will model the volume of the box when constructed. So again, you know, kind of looking at your best practices when looking at word problems, we need to first kind of see if we can identify a picture that is this is going to represent. And then obviously start um, defining, you know, our variables. So let's, uh, let's go and look at this and kind of see, all right, let's try to construct a picture that kind of represents this. So we have a piece of cardboard that is um, going to construct a box where I'm moving a square with a width. Now, I guess I probably should be a little bit more concerned that this is a, you know, rectangular piece of cardboard. Because it's six, 15 inches by 60 inches. All right. Then what they say is you're going to uh, to construct the box. You're going to be removing a a square with a width x. So inside of this, in each corner, we're going to be cutting out a square that's going to be a width x. Now we don't know the size of x. X could be really small. X could be really large, right? But it's going to be a square, and it's going to be the same all of these. All right, so now let's start let's let's start designing our variables so we can understand what everything is. So, let's say x is going to equal the size of the cut or the length of the cut, I guess I should probably say. Or the measure. Now, it, notice a kind of the important thing here is with when you cut this right so what you're going to do is you're going to get a what we call this is like what we call a net so when you get this you're going to get a box that's going to look something like this if you remember like in geometry class we kind of talked about this as a net so what these dashed lines would be these would be like the lines that your net is going to be folded along so what would happen is when you do this, I'm going to try to do my best here. You are now going to have a box here that's going to have a open, open top. So it's going to look something like this with a nice little open top. All right, so we can say that those are, that's going to be a side there, and then you're going to have a nice filled inside there. And obviously a nice little felden, you know, side there with the open box. So um, that's kind of what our box is going to be looking like. So it's going to be folded along those lines. So even though well x is representing the so the length of the cut, it's also going to represent the height, right? Because when you cut this and you fold it up, x is going to be the length of that cut. So this is going to be the also we'll call this the height. Okay. Um, now, they're saying write an equation to represent the volume. So the volume is going to be a function in relation to what is the what is the size of that cut, right? Because you could have a really small cut, you could have a really big cut, and that's going to give you a different shape of a box. So the volume is going to change. So let's say v of x um, is going to equal the volume of the box. All right, so a couple other things that I mentioned, we see volume, right? And if you remember kind of going back to your geometry days, uh, when we're looking at volume, volume is of a rectangular prism in this case, is basically just gonna be length times width, wow, length times width times height. Okay, now again, just because we don't have a top, that doesn't matter. That would kind of lean a little bit more towards like dealing with surface area and so forth. With the volume, we're looking for the space that this box can basically, you know, hold, the space inside of the box. So length, width, and height are still going to work. Now, so if X represents our height, let's look at the length and the width. And again, it doesn't matter which one you want to call length and width, but let's just call this the length and this, this the width. 
all right? Now, one thing I didn't do, I only measured x once, but again, these are square cuts, so these are all going to be x's. All right? Now, it says again that the size of the box is 15 inches by 60 inches, 60 inches piece of cardboard. So initially, this is, you know, let's call this the 60 inch because it's bigger than the fifth, this, this side. So initially we have this side of the, of the square or the rectangle cardboard is 60 inches. However, whatever X is, we're taking out two cuts. So we need to, a way to be able to represent what the width is going to be as well as what the length is going to be. So we've defined X as the height, but we know for the basic of the def, sorry, for the formula for volume, we need to also get to be what is going to be the length and what is going to be the width. Okay, so H is, we're going to replace H for X in this case. And now let's go and see. So if I have the width, so I basically have 60, and then I am going to be subtracting uh, one X and another X, so that we can write that as minus two X. And for the length, that is initially 15 inches, right? And then we're subtracting two cuts. So the length would be 15 minus 2x, okay? So we have defined x, which is really the height, h. We have defined v of x, which is going to be the volume of the box with respect to x. L is going to be the length, which is 15 minus 2x. And the width is going to be 60 minus 2x. All right, um, so now it's saying write the equation that models. So therefore, we could say the volume, v sub x, is going to be equal to the height. I'll just put the height first, okay, because it's just x. Um, so that's going to be the height times length times width. 15 minus 2x times 60 minus 2x. All right, let's move on to the next example here. It says, determine the values of x that will result in a volume of zero. So let's kind of look at this. We're saying, you know, we're talking about v sub x. That means x is going to be your input variable or your input variable, and v sub x is going to be your output, which is going to represent the volume. So our domain is going to be the set of all input values, basically being the size of our cuts. So what size of our cuts are going to produce a volume of zero? So let's kind of look at that. You know, let's think about this in terms of this box. Here's this box, right? If I make a cut of zero, I really didn't make a cut at all, right? So if I made, but I might have made a cut, like a really, really small cut, like let's say, you know, 0 0.0001, I'm still going to have a box. It's not going to have a very high height, right? It's going to have a height of 0 0.001. Again, these are inches, but it's going to be really small, but it's going to have a height and therefore it's going to have volume. So therefore I can, I can look at the, the values of X that are going to make us have a volume of zero would obviously be like no height at all. If you have no height, like if H is zero or X is zero, all of this is going to be equal to zero. So I can say the values of X that make that zero. Um, so I could say the volume will be zero at x equals zero. And is there another way that our volume is going to be zero? Well, again, if any of these turn out to be zero, then, then it's going to make the whole volume equal to zero as well, right? So basically what I can do is I know that x is equal to zero because basically what we're doing is we're looking at like the, the, uh, the zeros of the function, right? We're basically looking at zero equals x times 15 minus 2x times 60 minus 2x. So therefore, we can just set them all equal to zero. That's basically what we are doing. 2x equals zero, because if one of these is equal to zero, then if, uh, if one of them is equal to zero, then the, then the whole product is always going to be zero. So we have x equals zero. Here, I'd have to subtract 15, divide by negative 2. So x is equal to 7.5, 7 halves. Here, I'd have to subtract um, 60 divided by 2, so therefore, x equals 30. Okay, now we don't want to write 7.5 and 30 because think about this. If this length is only 15 inches, it doesn't even make sense to make our cuts at 30, right? I mean, you can't have this, be this x be 30, this x be 30, when the whole length of the side is only 15. So this one doesn't make sense. 
And the reason why 7.5 makes sense is think about it. If you make a cut that's 7.5, right, and then you have another cut that's 7.5, 7.5 plus 7.5 is 15. You basically will not have a width anymore, right? So the volume is going to be zero at x is equal to zero all the way to x is equal to 7.5, okay? And that's just very important to kind of understand the context of this problem. You know, we're taking this box, we're creating a volume. You got to understand your restrictions. That's something we've talked about with our domain restrictions, which we're going to kind of elaborate a little bit further. Because you, it says use the graphing technology to determine the domain and range of the function that models the situation. Well, we can kind of talk about the domain for right now um, because we've already looked at this algebraically. We don't need to look at the graph. So if I look at the, you know, I can already say the domain. It doesn't make sense for the length of the cut to be negative, right? We're making a cut that has a, a given a measurement. So anything less than zero is not going to make sense. Can, can zero be the cut? Well, yeah, you can do a cut that has a measure of zero. So therefore, you're not going to have initially any height anyway. So that's not really going to make you know, as much sense. Uh, could you turn that down? Um, excuse me. Can, can you turn that off? No, I'm recording be you know a part of that domain and you know and, and my answer is yeah you can just therefore you're not going to have a volume your volume is going to be zero but yeah i mean it's zero can be your zero cut and then so therefore we can use that kind of information to say well then if we can have zero then we can go all the way to 7.5 but we're not going to go any larger than 7.5 because to go any larger than 7.5 is not going to make any sense because therefore your cut would be larger than the actual piece of paper now for the range we know that obviously if we have a cut of zero, right, we're going to have a volume of zero. So we can have, since we said we can have a, volume, a you know, cut of zero, we're going to have a range of zero, right? But now let's go and take a look at, you know, what is going to be the maximum? And, you know, obviously I could plug in, um, you know, plug in some numbers to kind of see, but I don't know what the maximum value is, right? Um, and so that's one of those things that we, you know, talk about in the previous ones to kind of look for. But I did create a link here that we could go and take a look at. So what I did is I took the volume. I just represented it as y instead of v of x. And if we go and take a look at this. Now, do, note, do please note that the scale, how I looked at the scale. So I did pull this up before. Um, I did do some negative numbers just so I could, you could see the context of the graph. And I did have to change the y scale from the x scale. So notice how I'm going up by 500s on the y scale, and I'm going by 1s on the x scale, right? Notice here where 7.5 is, right? Notice where 0 is. Those are kind of like, again, the restrictions of the magnetic domain. And then you can see here that um, when it's at, when I'm making a measurement uh, or a cut of 3.486 measurements, that's going to produce the... Uh, the maximum volume, which I think I wrote down. Yeah, so that's going to produce a maximum volume of 1,484 um, inches cubed. I forgot to write that one down, though. Okay. So let's go and write that down. So the range is going to be from 0 to a maximum of 1,484.0 two, one. Okay, and I'm not going to use the, um, you know, I guess, units cubed. Okay, so that's going to be, and obviously you can, you know, inches and stuff like that if you have to, um, looking at that. So, but at least you can kind of see the range again is going to be, you know, how high it's going up and down, the domain is going how far left and right. Uh, use graph technology to determine the width x that will produce the volume of 300. So in this case, now this one's kind of interesting. So we have the equation v sub x is going to be equal to v sub x equal to x times 15 minus 2x times 60 minus 2x, right? And they're saying v sub x is now going to equal 300. So we need to find the values of x that equal 300. Right? So there's a couple different ways you can do this. You could graph a system of equations. You could graph this equation and then graph that equation and then see where they connect, so, you know, see where they cross, what values of x make that true for both equations. Um, another way you could do this is rather than doing that, which is perfectly fine, especially if you have like a TI calculator, that might be the fastest way. Um, you could also subtract 300 
And therefore, you'd have this as 0. x times 15 minus 2x times 60 minus 2x minus 300. So therefore, basically what we can do is you can think about this as like what we did before when we were trying to find the zeros, right? When we said like, if I want to say when is v of x equal to zero, we would replace v sub, you know, we would replace our equation with zero, right? So if I want to, if I, that's basically what I'm looking in here. I'm basically trying to find the x-intercepts um, or the x-values that when our function is equal to zero. But if I want to graph this, if I plug that into the graphing calculator, that's not going to graph a function. I need to graph the function y equals this expression and then look to see where the graph crosses. So that's exactly what I did in the next example here. As I did that, I took the, I, I took the function, subtracted 100, wrote it aesthetic to y. And now you can see that the values of x that make that function equal to 0 are going to be at 0 0.354 and 7.036. And before we just like assume those are the correct values, let's make sure, does that fit within our domain? Well, yeah, that fits within our domain because our domain, remember, was between 0 and 7.5, right? Now, these are pretty small cuts, uh, but you can see how those uh, pretty small as well as pretty big cuts that are going to be able to kind of give us your um, far range. Now, as far as when it's looking into, yeah, so those two cuts are both going to give us Sorry, those are going to be the two cuts that are going to give us our volume of 300. I didn't want to talk about maximizing. That was in the last one. So I think I wrote those down, which I did. Sweet. All right, so let's go ahead. So the, the values of x that produce a volume of 300. So I can say when v sub x is equal to 300. Oops, that's cubed inches cubed, x is going to equal 0.354 inches and 7.036 and inches. And there you go. That's uh, how we do it. So now we are done with our zeros, our introduction for zeros of polynomials. And now let's get on to the next one, uh, the next topic of zeros. Cheers.